wax resist concentric shape name painting. Week one, write your name spaced out on paper, repeating it if you'd like, and trace repeating shapes around a letter or word. And so for the first part of this project, we are going to need paper. I have a piece of watercolor paper here, pencil, and oil pastels. Now there's a few things to consider when you are writing your name big with a lot of space. If your name has a lot of letters, definitely keep your paper in the horizontal position so that you can space out your letters. But if you only have a few letters in your name, then you might want to turn it uh, vertically so that you can write it a number of times. So I think that I'm going to write Miss WD on mine. Now I want you to remember that you got to get all the way across the page. And so I'm just going to write Miss WD because this is going to be a little bit tricky to space out the letters. I know that it starts with M and so I'm going to write an M and I know that it ends with D. So all the way on the other side, all the way on the other side, I am going to write the very last letter. And then I can come back. Right next door to the first letter is I, and I'm going to make a little bit of space. And then all the way on this side, I have the W. And then all the way over here, I'm gonna have two S's. And so look at all this space right here. I could make my S's kind of big. All right. And so now I want to write this two or three times down the page, one right under the other. And it depends on how big you were writing. Maybe you only wanna do two, maybe you want to do three. I am going to do two, but this one I'm going to make really tall. So under M is an M. Under I is an I. Under S is an S. Under S is an S. Ooh, really tall. <laughs> under W is a W. And under D is a D. And now we're going to make our grid. The grid is important because we want each section of our paper to have one letter in it. So I'm going to draw a line in between my names. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can certainly use a ruler if you want. And line in between these letters. And you'll notice the way that I'm pulling my hand down the page. I'm not trying to draw a line. I'm just pulling my pencil down the page. <laughs> that looks pretty good. I think it's time to start coloring. Now because this is going to be a wax resist painting, I want something that is greasy to resist the watercolor paints we're going to put on later. And so I am going to use either oil pastels or wax crayons. It has to be one of those. It can't be any other tool. So you can choose either oil pastels or wax crayons. And if you are choosing wax crayons, just remember you're gonna have to press pretty hard in order to cover over the bumpiness of the paper texture. Now this part, I can do completely at random. Just like Vasily Kandinsky in the concentric circles paintings, I am going to be using a variety of colors. I'm only going to be coloring on the letters at this point. So I'm just gonna pick some colors at random.
at this point, I have all of my letters very thick and I'm ready to start creating the concentric shapes. Concentric just means repeating around the edge. And so once you figure out what shape you're going to use for each letter, you're good to go. For the M, I'm gonna go around the edge. Oop, that comes down, and that comes down, up, and down, and up. That's a nice concentric shape. And so I can make a series of concentric shapes. Oh no, I don't have enough space in there. <gasps> Notice how when I go to the edge of my rectangle, I just stop. It's like a big stop sign when you get to the edge of your rectangle. So I'm gonna go back up here. <gasps> oh, I have to stop again. I can pretend to go around and then come back down and then pretend to come around and go back down. Now, some choices that you can make, you can color in these concentric shapes or you can wait to paint them later. I think I'm gonna color this one in just to show you what I mean. But you want to make sure that these shapes are concentric and that it goes around the edge. You might run out of space like I did here to create the exact same shape and that's totally fine. Around, around, around the edge. Around, around, around the edge. Around, around, around the edge. That makes a concentric shape. Around, around, around the edge. Around, around, around the edge. Around, around, around the edge. That makes a concentric shape. You're making choices about colors just like Vasily Kandinsky. Around, around, around the edge, around, around the, oop, stop. I got to a line, see? Around, 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 the... stop, stop. <laughs> around, around, around the edge, around, around, around the edge. Around, around, around the edge. That makes a concentric shape. Using good craftsmanship is hard. But using good craftsmanship by coloring inside the lines makes for a very beautiful art. Around, around, around the edge. Around, around, around the edge. Around, around, around the edge. That makes a concentric shape. Around, around, around the edge, around, around, around the edge, around, around, around the edge. If I don't repeat that, it's not a concentric shape. It's just an outline. Concentric shapes are when you repeat the outline farther and farther and farther outward with the same shape. It's all about the repetition. I feel like I'm done coloring. There are other things that you can do, of course. If this is a little bit too challenging for you, then you could just use a half sheet of paper and do your name once. Maybe instead you would like to do your whole name and make a concentric shape around your entire name and just make it grow and grow and grow with concentric shapes. There are lots of different things that you could try and be creative, but I want you to stay focused on the expectations. The expectations are, I want you to learn about concentric shapes. Shapes that go around the same shape and around the same shape repeated. It's almost like an echo, echo, echo. But in art form, I also want you to learn a little bit about Vasily Kandinsky and his abstract art. Abstract art focuses on the elements of art, such as line, shape, and color. And so if you are showing evidence in your artwork that you know a little bit about those things, then you can get very creative with this project. That's it for week one. Come on back week two to paint. 
complete too. Paint with a light watercolor wash in each concentric shape and or rectangle to cover up the white paper. It is time to paint! You will need water. You will need watercolor paints. And if you do not have watercolor paints, you can always just soak an old marker in a little container of water such as this and allow the color to drip into the paint so that you can use that. Don't use too much water in your container if you are doing that unless you have a lot of old markers that you would like to drop in there. The less water you use in your marker paint creation, the thicker the wa watercolor paints will be. Now I'm just going to use this um, education based watercolor cakes and I'm gonna make sure that my brush is clean by scrub scrub scrubbing on the bottom of the bowl. Cleaning your brush means you have to actually press pretty hard on the bottom of the bowl. Scrub scrub scrub. We don't want to tap the brush because it could cause the water to spread so you just want to drag it off if at all. In order to get the cake ready to paint with add a little bit of water to it to wake it up. So let's say that I want to use some blue. I can put some blue into the lid and then add enough water so that I can spread it out easily. Doop, dop, doop, dop. And now I'm going to find a rectangle that I want to paint. I think I'm going to paint this rectangle first. So I'm going to start in the corners. And work my way to the middle. You'll notice that it is beating up on the oily oil pastel areas. Some of the areas are not quite as oily and it's sticking a little bit. If you'd like, you can always dab it off with a tissue. If you don't like it on top of your letters, or you can just use another piece of paper to dab it off. And so you can do your next color. I'm going to wake up the green a little bit and add it into this color on the tray. Add some water so that it is easy to spread around and then do my next rectangle. Now if you would like, you can paint individual concentric shapes. You don't have to paint the whole rectangle at once. So for example, if I just wanted to paint this concentric shape here with this color that I've created, that's fine too. The idea is to have very wet watercolor paint on all of the white spots of your page. And you don't have to worry about it getting on top of your drawing because it's a wax resist. If you try to use acrylics or watercolor paints that don't have enough water in them, this process will not work. I do want to see evidence of learning about wax resist painting styles, which means that I actually want to see that you have used the correct media, that is very liquidy paint mixed with lots of water on top of your crayon or oil pastel drawing. As you are painting, pull the brush away from your painting. Always going away. If you try to go toward your painting, the little bristles or hairs on your brush are gonna get all tangled. If you get too much paint on your paper, add a little bit of water to the brush. 
if you get too much water on your paper, soak it up with a paper towel. If you want your color lighter, you can add more water. Make sure to clean off your palette before you close it up. There you have it, your wax resist concentric shape name paintings inspired by Vasily Kandinsky. I hope you had a lot of fun. Remember, take a pic of your art and upload to Canvas for a grade. Meow? I mean, bye!